previously on the Adventure Zone. In that, the wasteland outside of the city limits of uh, Gold Cliff, you, you see these long lines of dust clouds. And as you get even closer, you realize that the clouds are being whipped up by wagons that are speeding through the wasteland. Uh, Is it a race? Good question. It, with your six untrained eyes, uh, eight if you count the goldfish, uh, it kind of <laughs> kind of looks like it a little bit. Hmm. Um, hmm. You see a slender woman, and on her face, she is wearing a uh, black feathered mask. We can try talking to her and everything. The three of you shouldn't be here, she says. Magnus says, look over there, and charges her. She's going to cast Thunder Wave. Uh, 21 points of damage. Listen, we might have been a bit hasty with the smiting. I'm uh, two points dead. Oh, I'm negative five, baby. Uh, and through that window swings a halfling woman wearing what looks like a karate gi. Uh, as she rolls into the room, she says, uh, Sloane, you're not a killer. Without saying a word, the raven turns into a gray cloud and goes flying out the window. Another successful battle, gentlemen. Ow. We win. Hey, everyone, this is Mark. I'm filling in for the usual guy. I took his family on vacation. I think they went to Dollywood. It's the Adventure Zone. The three of you have been successfully uh, e- extracted from the... Happy birthday oh. to you. Okay. Oh. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, stop. Happy birthday, dear daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Happy birthday to oh. you. And a cake? Oh, my Lord. I made a fantasy cake. Um, <laughs> no. Oh. Happy birthday, daddy. Happy Thank birthday, you. daddy. As, as your gift, uh, your character is still alive. Yay! Oh. oh, thank goodness. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's a gift I've also given to Taco. Um, in fact, the three of you have oh, been... excellent. The three of it's you... my birthday. The three of you <laughs> have been Rescue 911'd from the, uh, from the Gold Cliff Trust. Uh, you, you don't remember a lot. It was kind of hazy, kind of touch and go there for a while. But this, uh, this halfling woman that came to your rescue there at the very end of our last adventure... Uh, pull, pull the three of you from this building. So you're, you're back outside with the Gold Cliff Militia, uh, still sort of encircling the building. Um, although the vines that had grown around the building and had started to, like, encompass it have started to uh, turn turn gray and start to uh, die and start to sort of uh, peel off of the building. Um and, are we uh, like on gurneys with like IVs? And, yeah, are and we all that beat stuff? up? Or are, we... are we in the recovery tent, like eating a couple cookies and like having Eat... some orange juice? Yeah, you're 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 it's all splitting some halos, some tangelos, um, and uh, <laughs> the, the Gold Cliff Militia medics are seeing to you. You've been brought back from unconsciousness. I, sh- I should point out when when a, when this is just good for future reference, I guess. If your guys' hit points drop to zero you don't die we had a lot of people tweeting like well i guess justin and, and clint are off the show no that's it's not exactly how it works but if you would like to vote for that oh. push five five wow. five five on your phone <laughs> and text the words Taco. only you can save uh no you that's don't do any robin you don't do anything else you just press five 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 mm-hmm. and we'll know and we'll just get don't stop yeah. pressing five until the next episode comes out uh, <laughs> Captain Bane walks into the cooldown tent and says, uh, well, you guys are the worst. Huh? I don't, I do not want to continue this adventure and get caught up in all your, your magical entanglements until I have clarified that we have taken a short rest. Okay. I want it clear that yes. we've rested. Have we rested? Yeah, you got, you guys have had, uh, you guys have had a rest. <sighs> You've had a, okay. a calm down. All right. Um, so if you want to roll your hit dice and recover some HPs, I, I'm fine with that. I'll allow that to happen. I don't know how that works. Uh, you know what? We're gonna we're about to get into long rest town, unless you decide to like just start fighting people. Uh, we're we're about to get in, like, into I, long rest territory, and that'll just reset you back to zero. So, 
Um, you don't. Well, have to, how many hit dice do I have? Why don't you just tell me how many? What, how, what's the deal with that hit dice? I don't. I don't understand. There's the a system. hit dice square. Yeah, and you roll those, and that's how you get points back on a short rest. But I'm gonna give you a long rest. You're about to take a full full blown snooze. I just don't understand why me understanding the basic rules of Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> is like an unfit way to spend our time. Like God forbid, I should basically Justin understand the doing. rules at this point. You have a resource like called. You have a resource called. In. You have a resource called hit dice, right? How many do I got? I'm, it's not on my sheet. I'm not your. I don't know, dude. Look I'm not. directly down from armor class. No, I mean, it's on my sheet. It's just blank because I don't have it filled out. Well, then what whose fault is that? Like four? Does that feel right? <laughs> no, it's Seven? more than four. Just let me cradle you in my, in my narrative. <laughs> my, in my narrative. Hold um, him to your narrative, baby, baby Bjorn. Um, hold, hold him to your narrative bosom. Captain Bane walks into the cooldown tent and says, uh, What happened to you guys? You guys look like dirt. We got attacked by weeds. That'll happen. That'll happen. I knew that was a risk when I sent you boys in there. She I was, knew she I, was very strong. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, she has a, like soup, like, like it was like silly. Like we we were not even close. It was not. A, it was not a fair matchup. It would be like uh, if the kids from Mighty Ducks were to like take on the Monstars, but in like hockey. Well, the monsters specifically drain basketball talent from Well, from maybe Charles they just Barkley. all drain like Wayne Gretzky and four other good hockey players. Yeah, you you know I hate to I, I hate to uh, corrupt anybody's metaphor, but I think the Ducks could stand a good shot there. <laughs> I mean, the the monsters we have no guarantee that they know how to skate. I mean, for starters, he has a good point. They're, most of them are pretty tall and gangly. And and for a good hockey player, you want a very low center of gravity. I think the question is going to be, do the Mighty Ducks still have Emilio Estevez, and do the Monstars have an equivalently inspiring coach? Well, no, that's just... If you saw Space Jam, they, their coach was kind of a megalomaniac. Could they do it with the At, coach from Iceland? Probably, yeah. In case anybody's wondering why the birthday boy hasn't tried to get in on this one, he has taken to literally examining books on my shelf, <laughs> pulling them off the shelf, checking out the cover, and then returning them back. It's my birthday! It's his birthday. He doesn't have to engage with our Space Jam And I've never fiction. heard any of these movies. What are these movies? Never heard of Mighty Ducks or, or Space, Space Jam? Jam? These are deep well, cuts, I'm old man. I'm familiar with Mighty Ducks just because I'm familiar with real sports like the Anaheim Ducks. Okay. But Space Jam, I only know it from the references on that other podcast you do. Listen, uh, that was pretty scary. Like, honestly, she's, like, really scary. I don't tell know. Me, tell me know. exactly what happened. Did she just, just start wailing on you as soon as you saw her? Well, yeah, no. I mean, well, well um, okay. I think there might have been some talk of smiting. And then. There's more nuance, um, I guess. Maybe it was hinted at. We made the first move. Maybe she made the first move. I, uh, who, who can say? Hold on, she didn't. She didn't just attack you as soon as she saw you. No, she actually told us uh, that we should probably go, um, mm. and that we should, like she that we like should leave. Um, she seemed like concerned about our safety. Yeah, it was more of a body language thing. Body language. She. I mean, there was a lot of threatening behavior going on. Hmm. There were vines yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Maybe somebody's pants got pulled down. A lot of stuff happened. <laughs> Um, yeah. that's, that is he peculiar. He lost his wiener. Yep. Ripped Could off we, his wiener. Got his wiener cut off. But then it grew back, because I took a long rest. That is how it works. <laughs> um, he looks to the, uh, he looks to the medics in the room, and he says, uh, Could I have the tent, please? <laughs> Where do you uh, want it? <laughs> and they say, uh, they said, Yes! And then they leaved. Um, and, uh... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So Were they German gangsters? Yas! Yeah, I mean, you go outside the tent now. And, uh, uh, just to be clear, Griffin, they leaved? Yeah, Is they that leaved. What, the word you used? They leaved? Okay, I just want to make sure they leaved. He was uh, using the past-present participle. Exactly. Uh, and Bane turns to three of you, uh, and says, uh... This is, uh... This is unprecedented. I'd never considered the possibility that one of these grand relics could end up in the hands of like a good, like a good person, like a good-natured, good-hearted person. Well, I so mean, she, she is always a like thief. This? Well, I mean, yeah, but the fact that here's the thing: the the power that these these items grant you can corrupt you so completely that you just completely lose control uh, of that power. And the fact that she didn't just outright kill you makes me think she's 
somehow trying to resist the, the, the thrall of this grand relic. It was weird. She seemed like she, she was buying into it almost. Like she was consciously into the thrall, but she was aware that she was in a thrall. We need to know. We need to know more about the Raven uh, if we're going to take her down. And I, I fortunately, I think we may have an inroad. Captain, said, may I ask yeah, you a question? Yeah. In, in your in your knowledge, has there ever been uh, someone who has held one of these relics and not been corrupted over a period of time? Eventually, I mean, all we all we have to go on is historical sort of evidence uh, from from before the wars. Um, but, the long, but, long ago. The long, long ago. The long forgotten. And uh, I, it, it, unfortunately, no. A hundred percent of the time, somebody gets their hands on one of these powers, and regardless of their intentions. They, they they lose control. Now it's possible that maybe she's still early on in her corruption, uh, but it, but it's hard to say. We don't have a lot of uh, modern data to go off of. Uh, I do know. I have heard tell of one very powerful wizard who was able to redu- resist the thrall of the gauntlet. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of his name from legend. He's T to the double A Co. <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> Taco, no bigs. Autographs to the left. You probably heard already. You probably have my CD, my inspirational CD. Grab the gauntlet and don't look back. The taco <laughs> story. Uh, did you ever li- stream it? Are you telling me that you actually <laughs> equipped the the gauntlet? Oh no! Don't be stupid. I put it in my bag. That's my what snacks. I'm. That, that's what I'm talking about. Once, once oh, you, okay. I've, I've coined a phrase that I like to use uh, around around the bob, and that is uh, once you pop, the the <laughs> corruption and power drunkenness do do not stop. Um, so so once <laughs> you start, cumbersome, it is a, a little, little bit. It doesn't yeah, feel it's, good. It's, it has a bad mouth feel. But I'm working on it. <laughs> that's why Pringles stopped using it. Probably. Now, what are Pringos? What Pringles. Is it? There are Let's... Pringles in this universe, Griffin. It's pre-established. Our roommate wanted some Pringles. <laughs> oh, that's <Boom>. right. <laughs> oh, yes, of and, course. And Pringles are kind of like, if you look at them, they look a little bit like, I don't know, a taco shell. Uh, except they're made out of potato. Now you're just talking. That's not going to fly, is You're it? just no, talking out of your ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have an inroad. If we, if we want to get more information on the Raven. Uh, and, and it is my lieutenant, Lieutenant Hurley, uh, your, your savior. Uh, I, I've, been, I've suspected for a long time that she has some sort of uh, in- involvement with the Raven, some sort of... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, she called her by name. She did? What was her name? I don't remember. Well... I have not listened to the last episode again. That might have been help- <laughs> handy for my investigation, but... Uh, I think it was it, Susan? Margaret. I think it was Margaret. Okay. Margaret. Susan Margaret. It was it's, a hyphenated... She's Catholic? No. I, I, Oprah? Oprah? S- Maybe Oprah. Well, Was it Oprah? I think, Susan Margaret, Margaret Oprah. Yes. The, the, the classic. The classic Catholic name. Uh, <laughs> well, then you've just confirmed my suspicion. I, I want the three of you to uh, talk, talk to Lieutenant Hurley. She... Uh, I, I've tried to bring this up with her in the past, but you know, there's there's all kinds of HR implications. Uh, so the, the three of you uh, talk talk to her and and see what you can get out of her about the Raven. Okay, sure. Where's she at? Uh, probably just right outside this tent. That would be pretty handy if you didn't have to like go around looking for her. She was just like right there. That would be nice. Okay. Send all her right, in. So we go outside. We go outside the tent. <laughs> we'll see her now. <laughs> Perfect security. Canvas that holds all the sound in. It's better than standing outside. It's um, hot out there. There's the smell of rotting vines. That's not a you, good look. You see, uh, Lieutenant Hurley, the uh, halfling monk woman who saved you uh, from from uh, the Ravens' attacks. Uh, just a, a, a few- Griffin. Can I? Can I? Can you clarify something for me? Yeah, I, I've never seen you're in the habit of doing this. If you say halfling monk woman, that's not actually accurate, right? What do you mean? Like she's Unless not she's a, half monkey. She's not a woman, right? No, she is a She's a halfling. She's Like a isn't a woman and a man like those are humans, right? Female. Yeah, but that seems weird. Half let half You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess half less? Is that L what's the I female what's the what's the female elf? A halfling? Well, a halfling, a halfling isn't a half elf. A halfling is like a a, a a hobbit. A hobbit. Yeah. 
But we can't use that because of licensing, right? Well, no, right. we can't. In fact, I beat it out uh, every time we've said it so far. So Hobbit, for, Hobbit, for Hobbit, the, Hobbit, no, Hobbit, 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 Hobbit. Monks in the um, the D and D universe. That's like the fighting style class, right? Not like a religious. Yeah, it's more Friar uh, Friar Lawrence, less Friar Tuck. Or did I get those? Confused? You switched it. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, you swapped it. Uh, you but s- they use a staff, right? They use both staff. Bow staff. Use their hands. So it's more like Friar Donatello. Yep. Than Friar Lawrence. <laughs> you see Friar Donatello. Uh, uh, a few dozen yards away, and she is tending to two uh, militiamen who had been sort of swallowed up by these vines. They've suffered some pretty serious uh, scrapes and bruises. Uh, and you see her clap her hands together and sort of rub them together to like build some sort of friction. Uh, and then she places her, her hands on the wounds, and then uh, you see like a sort of radiant light uh, come come oh. from her hands, and then the wounds are gone, and these these wounded soldiers look a little bit more vital. Did bit you healed. see that, fellow? She miyagi the shit out of those guys, <laughs> and uh, that is in fact what she did to you. You you can she re- miyagi us? Yeah, you remember sort of through the haze of your uh, your unconsciousness that she uh, she tended to your wounds back back up on the top of the vault. Uh, so she brings these two. She uh, gave us good good touches. Well. In my opinion, she used her cheese. Yeah, I, I've she, read about that's that. That's right. She cheesed. She cheesed y'all. She harnessed uh, her cheese. Ma'am, could you step over here for a second? Uh, I think they'll be fine. We have to move the plot forward. <laughs> she walks over to you and says, "I'm glad to see that the three of you are doing better." She did quite a number on you, huh? Yes. Thank you so much for touching us. Yeah, that's kind of a weird way of putting it, but no, uh, I really, I liked, I liked that you touched us and it felt good. Thank okay. you. You are quite welcome. Uh, I, I I gotta ask that did she did she say anything before I came into your rescue all Deus Ex Machina style? Yeah, she. Uh, well, she, she seemed concerned about us. As weird as that sounds, for somebody who's in the thrall of like a magic belt. Uh, kind of. Whoa, well, hold on. Out. What did you? What did you just? You just uh, uh, you kind of okay, broke up. Let, you kind let, of broke up there. What yeah, just what just I, happened? I have a stutter. Um. <laughs> The, so that wasn't a stutter. Somebody... It was like you just. It was. It was almost like you just started talking in like fuzz or something. What, what was that? Nothing. I. I am have. A, I'm part robot, <laughs> and sometimes my action winds down, and my talking center <laughs> stops working as good. Basically, so it's hard to explain to the layman. You're Anywho, some. You're, uh, you're some sort of automated golem. You're saying no, it's, you no, know, just like, part. You know, part like. Golem. <laughs> Like TikTok, but mainly man, <laughs> but all wizard and actually elf and no man. So anywho, um, <laughs> we we uh, yeah, she seemed concerned about us, which seems weird for somebody who is um, seems to be as angry as she is. It's not. I don't think it's that weird at all. Actually, and she looks she looks forlorn. She looks kind of bummed out. Well, she says, "What uh, do you what do you know about her, Hurley?" Uh, how did you know my name? Captain uh, Captain Bane Professor, told us. Captain Captain Bane told us. Captain Captain Bane told us. Oh yeah. Um, they said your first name was Elizabeth. <clears throat> Don't forget to use your character voice, birthday boy. She said your name was Elizabeth. That's worse. Okay. Uh, I I I I've I mean I've investigated her, but uh, I, I I've tried to bust her. You know, I just I when I see uh, a perp, I just I I think I'm got I gotta bust her. I want to roll so. insight, Griffey. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Okay, so just a flat sixteen. Okay, yeah, she's she's definitely lying. You you get the impression that she is, uh, she Lieutenant is not Hurley, being forth, you, forthright. Lieutenant Hurley, you knew her real name. Yeah, that was just something I picked up and when I was uh in my investigation. I've gotta uh actually go because I, wait, ooh, I told, hold on, wait, sh- wait, I see a perp over there. I gotta go, guys. Uh, no, gotta... just hang on one second. I wait, 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 I think wait, I wait. smell in the air a return of the adventure zone. A uh, narrative favorite. <laughs> it's a zone of truth. Zone of truth. Zone of truth is back. Zone of truth. Okay, she gets to roll to resist <laughs> the zone of truth, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, D- that guess. sounds doesn't right. Seem to be the most, doesn't seem to be the most like narratively useful thing, but I'm certain she can resist. Yeah, it's a charisma block. Uh, she rolled a four, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, regardless of what the modifiers could be and whatever the target is, that's that's gonna fail. Uh, the three of you also need to roll, though. I think you're trying to beat a 14. I rolled a four. Okay, you're telling the truth. I rolled a six. 
Truth. I rolled a 16. All right, so Dad can lie. Everyone else is on truth duty. Okay, sounds good. So where's the raven? I don't know. Uh, I don't know where the raven is. I wish I knew. What's I wish your relationship to the woman that was up in the tower with us? We were partners. We 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 were. Uh, what if, what's going on? She says I feel like dizzy. What what did you all do to me? It's my cologne. Go on. Yeah, we were. Um, we uh, we worked together. Uh, I I I. I was trying to apprehend her for a while, but then we, we started to, uh, we, we, we became very close, and, and we... Lieutenant Hurley, was we, doing... we acted rashly when we met the Raven in the vault. In the future, the next time we meet her, we want to help her. She's in danger. I we agree. need to know everything you know about her so that we can convince her to let us help her the next time we meet her. What is your, what is your, what are, what do the three of you all want? From from the Raven. We are good men who are trying to help, and that's all we can say. I'm not a man. I we're I, I good know. people. <laughs> we're yeah, no, not people. Again, we're good, good beings. Chaotic good. Some of us. Well, and I have a huge inheritance for her, and if I find her, I can give it to <laughs> so her. So you're just that's like right. you're just we lying as are? much as you're just like you have cashed in on your lying. If you beat voucher. the zone of truth, okay. you actually are forced to lie. <laughs> I okay. am skinny. Now we, now we can't back you up here. So let me. Uh, well, don't let her. You heard the words he said, right? He definitely said that. That's a thing. Huge said. inheritance. That is definitely what he said. Six figures. You're hearing it. He's saying it. That's got to mean something. Right? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I want to help her too, and I think I've come up with a way. I, I'm gonna need your all's help, though. Okay. Uh, come with me, she says, and starts to uh, uh, walk walk briskly like a like a speedy monk would uh, away from this away from this scene. Should we tell Captain Captain Bane goodbye or? Nah, he's probably he's probably <sighs> leave him a note. He's probably cool with it. Okay, I jot down a note. Dear Captain Bane, <laughs> went with Lieutenant Hurley. We need more milk. Love, Magnus. Uh, so the three of you follow her through the uh, through the winding streets of uh, of Goldcliff. She's actually pretty tricky to keep up with. She uh, she she moves uh, really quickly. Uh, Griffin, and, is there? Do we get a chance to like stop and do any like sightseeing or like pick up any like souvenirs or trash keys or anything? Um, no, or else you'd lose her. Do you want to well, lose her? Can I ask her? No. No. We don't have time to shop. You but I shop. want tchotchkes. You can shop. Listen, you know how the, the structure of this show. After the adventure is over, then you can shop. You've done yeah, this before. Yeah, but we'll shop back up on the moon. I want, like, Travis, a magnet Travis, or a postcard. Or okay. It's my birthday. Yes, you can buy a gold cliff magnet. Yay. <laughs> I'm adding that to my inventory. Okay. But it costs you 600, <laughs> it costs you 600 gold pieces. I steal it. Okay. Roll a sleight of hand check. No, oh, that's. I rolled a twelve. Okay, the shopkeeper rolled a sixteen perception. Hey, you give that back! <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we gotta go. <laughs> give that back, criminal thief! Thief, stop him! Uh, and Hurley turns around and says, "I'm a, I'm a, like a cop. What are you doing? Give that well, back!" We okay, I give it back. All is forgiven, says the shopkeeper. <laughs> go, go along your merry way, but remember this kindness and pay it forward. <laughs> What was that shopkeeper's name? His he will come back. His name was Haley Joel Osmond from Pay It Forward. <laughs> Haley Joel Osmond. Haley okay. Joel Helen Hunt. <laughs> also from Pay It Forward. Um, you, you, the three of you, follow uh, Lieutenant Hurley into uh, a sort of seedier part of Goldcliff. It's well outside of sort of the uh, the the business district. Uh, that's all sort of shiny and and golden and well tended streets. Uh, hey Griff, if you were to put this in like a uh, just for the the so I'm imagining right, like if you were to put this in a modern time period in in our realm, yeah, like what sort of where are we? Can you give me like a comparison, close comparison? Sort of off the you just left sort of Chicago's magnificent mile area with its with its tall buildings and uh, uh, scenic vistas. Uh, and now you're, uh, 
I don't know. I didn't spend enough time in Chicago to well, get it Well, let's good... use something that everybody can relate to. We're in, like, the west end of Huntington. Myrtle Beach. You're in the west end of Huntington. Now. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. it's less sparsely populated. Buildings are, you know, a little bit crummier. Um, Got it. Uh, there's a barrel with a fire in it. <laughs> okay. And well, like, that, that someone's selling? Uh, and the, uh, no, nobody's selling you a fire barrel. What are you talking about? I mean, I would buy that. It sounds very useful. And it sounds like you'd try to steal it. Well, I, I a, didn't no, want to steal now the magnet. You're a thief. I didn't want to steal the magnet. The pr- they got priced out of like being able to purchase it. I All is forgiven. All is forgiven. Listen, let's not. Let's not. Let's, I'm just disappointed in you, but let, let's not um, just hang too long on that that sad moment where all innocence was lost. Um, she she <laughs> takes you to a uh, a small uh, garage in the uh, in in off a, uh, off a main street in this sort of uh, spooky side of town. And uh, you, uh, she, she walks up to the door and lifts it open. It's a big uh, sort of sliding garage door. Uh, and the three of you walk into her garage, and the door shuts behind you, and it's pitch black. And then you hear the sound of a switch being flipped. And uh, as, as the room lights up, you realize this is actually a really, really nice garage. It's really well kept. A lot of uh, modern fixtures. Uh, much nicer than the uh, exterior of the building would have you sort of believe. Uh, it is a little bit messy. There are uh, some some parts scattered all over the room. Uh, there are three uh, cars that have been completely just uh, shucked for parts. Uh, and in the middle of the room is, uh, and by cars, I mean wagons. All those times I said cars, I meant wagons. Um, wagons. Yeah, wagons. And uh, in the middle of the room uh is uh, a a large wagon shaped object that is covered by a uh a, a huge brown tarp uh that has been thrown over it uh i'm gonna roll a perception check okay and see if i notice anything about the object in the tarp or in the room okay natural 20 plus 121 okay um can't believe i always waste my 20s on perception checks like i give a shit uh no I mean you can you can give a shit um uh the the vehicles that have been stripped uh all around the room have some sort of like weaponry attached to them one of them has like a harpoon uh attached to the side uh one of them has uh a, some sort of mounted cannon on on top of it with a with a chair uh but most of the parts that have been stripped from from them are um sort of in interior looks like maybe the the engine of one of them got torn out um yeah uh you 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 have a hard time sort of discerning the shape uh, of the 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 wagon in the middle of the room though that's covered up so this is i mean obviously associated with the racing we saw when we were flying into town yeah hurley says surely you all are familiar with the the racing that takes place outside of town Oh, yeah. Big fans. Like, it's huge. Uh, Love it. Real good stuff. Myself and the Raven, our our relationship began... uh, Her name is Sloan, and I'm I'm just going to call her Sloan because I... I, I'm uncomfortable calling her the Raven. I hope that's okay. Is the Raven is the Raven thing something that's happened recently, or when she was like doing her stealing with you? Uh, oh, like, we didn't do stealing together. I, the, I no, she, okay, but she was the Raven recently, like since she's seemed to get meaner and more powerful. This is the, um, she was the Raven before. Well, she was technically the Raven before. Let me show you. She uh, goes over to a a cabinet with a couple of boxes on it and pries one open. And uh, dumps it out, and uh, a bunch of raven masks come out. And it's the same masks that you saw uh, the, the raven wearing uh, in the vault. I put one on. Oh, don't do that, she <laughs> says. That, that's, uh, that's really uncomfortable for me if you could actually take that off. Ah, grab her! Grab her! <laughs> that's a good bit. That's a good bit. I would like you to take that off, though. I take it off. Thanks. Great bit. Again, great bit, but don't do that uh, anymore. Um, she says, let me, let me explain from the beginning. Uh, uh, Sloane and I, 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 I was in, in charge of pursuing Sloane. She was sort of a small time criminal, uh, and, and I was pursuing her. Um, and little did I know that she was actually a battle wagon racer. And I, if, if you live in Goldcliff, you're, you're familiar with, 
with battle wagons. Um, they're, they're sort of the uh, favorite sport of the rich and famous here in Goldcliff. Uh, they, they're, they, they're races that happen in the desert outskirts of town. And uh, you, you place bets on them if you are a moneyed individual. Um, they, they can be brutal blood sports from time to time, but most people just turn a blind eye because the, the powerful people who run this city kind of can't live without them. Um, and so I discovered that, that Sloan was a battle wagon racer, and she was so good. Uh, and I was, sort of, uh, I was sort of seduced by racing, and so the two of us started to work together. Um, and she reaches over to another box and dumps it over. And uh, a bunch of masks shaped like ram's heads uh, pour out, complete with uh, these, like, spiraled horns on the top of the head. And she said, I start I, to reach for one. Nope. She, like, with a deft movement, like a thunderclap, slaps your hand out of the way. Uh, she says, uh, she went by the raven and I went by the ram. It's customary for battle wagon racers to be anonymous uh, so that the, the people watching – don't know who you are because you are technically committing a crime um and the, the two of us were were you doing this while you were a cop yeah i mean Ooh. it's again people people like to turn a blind eye hence hence the masks i didn't want anybody knowing i was technically breaking the law oh uh, so it's all mildly illegal it's i mean it's illegal but it's it's so exciting and i'm super good at it she says <laughs> Uh, and it's a, listen, if you don't hurt anybody, and we never did, we, we, we ran a, we ran clean, she said. Uh, we, we, uh, you know, it's not really against the law, you're just going really fast. When did things start to break bad? Um, things started to break bad about a month ago, she says, and I can't explain it. I still don't understand what was going on, but the Raven started to develop these almost superhuman, godlike powers, and, and... And I'm not sure. And that sure. seemed weird at first. I didn't, I, I still don't know what was going on, but she, she's starting to change. She started to become distant and violent out on the track. She, um, she, she, she took out another car while, that we were racing against and, and two of the people on that car died. And, um, uh, and by car, I mean wagon. And, uh, we, we stopped, we stopped racing together after that. Did you notice we were using any, like, um, powers or abilities that seem like supernatural, you know? Yeah. Anything strange? N no, she made that bank get swallowed up by vines, and I just thought that maybe those vines just started to grow, like, by themselves. How crazy. Weird. I meant, These vines, wow, this is an aggressive vine. Shit. Yes, she, she, she has powers that she was using during the races. She, she was controlling storms and causing the earth to to split in two and don't get me wrong like it was pretty it was pretty dope cool like, it was like, yeah cool it looked really yeah. cool but people started to get hurt and so i stopped racing with her did yeah. the raven mention any strange adventures she had gone on around this time or meeting with anyone no once she started developing this power she stopped telling me really anything did you happen to notice her wearing a really cool belt what never mind um, uh, any cool, um, okay, did she wear any new accessories? <laughs> no, is that the source of her power? No, it's just, we're, <laughs> we're always looking for new fashion no. ideas. I just want to stay abreast of the trends, you know. Listen. I seems unrelated now. <laughs> kind of a red carpet thing. <laughs> Context, yeah. I think I have a way for us to stop her, she says. The, 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 but I refuse to harm her, she says. If whatever we do, I, I won't be party to anything that sees any harm come to her. She's not at fault here. She's just she's lost control sure. to something sure. that's, that's bigger than herself. And Don't you worry. We'll take care of that side of things. And she's not a bad person. She's, <laughs> she's, she's not going to be able to give up her powers willingly. She's, she's terrified. Last time we spoke, she, she had this moment of lucidity where she talked about how afraid she was that she was developing these powers she couldn't control and that the only thing she wanted was proof that there was something more powerful than 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 her she wanted to be bested she wanted to be proven that this this power she developed wasn't absolute that she could maybe one day be be, be rid of it <laughs> listen if you're looking for people more powerful than her the last time we met her she knocked us out in like one attack well that's because you're trying to fight her she said 
I, I didn't if we say, had tried to uh, hug her, it would have gone better. Well, no, she's probably really good at hugging too, because she can control vines and just sort of wrap you up and give you a plant hug. I think there's, I can't beat her in a fight. I'm an extremely gifted martial artist, but there is one thing I think I can beat her at. She says. She reaches over and grabs the tarp and rips it to the side, uh, exposing uh, a battle wagon that uh, it has a dark gray tanned leather exterior with these uh, sleek patches of thick uh, silvery armor all across it. Uh, it's, cup holders? It's uh, Yeah, there's definitely definitely some, some interior tweaks, some cup holders inside, cool. a couple of bucket seats in there. Uh, Does the, it come with satellite radio or is that additional? That is non-existent. Um, uh, the, the bow of this battle wagon is long and flat with what appears to be a black metal engine block poking out of the uh poking through it uh and on the front of the car two shiny chrome spirals are positioned on either end of the oh, hood like ram sort of horns. emulating the appearance of two ram horns um, it's ram tough on yeah. the back of the wagon there's this array of six huge exhaust pipes uh hanging off of the back of the car it is this this battle wagon is the single most imposing physical object you've ever seen in your entire life griffy is it is it more like man max or is it more like sleek like has it is Imagine it battle like, damaged or is it like this oh it's is. not battle damaged it, it it almost looks frankensteinian like it looks like if the like six of the cars from mad max have been smashed into like the death proof muscle car um it looks it looks at the same time like sleek uh, and also, like, really, really dangerous. Shotgun! <laughs> <sighs> I called it. You all heard me call it. She That's said, a bitch and ride. Yeah, thanks. I've been working on it for, for weeks now. I've stripped some of the best parts off of the wagons that I've won in pink slip races, and I've put together a vehicle I know I can beat her in. I know I can beat her in this wagon. She says, um, but I need riders in order to pull that off. But before we can even challenge her... I'm going to need help getting my hands on a part to finish this wagon off. And unfortunately, getting that part is going to require a bit of law breaking. Is it a hood ornament? Nah. We got two badass ones of those already. What is, is it? The door? Nope, we got doors. The sponge engine. dice? Engine? Nope, got an engine. Gasoline. Wheels? Gasoline, kind of. <laughs> top? Uh, like a top. But not a car, right? It's a wagon? It's a wagon. Hey, wagon gas? <laughs> to put in your wagon engine. Uh, listen, uh, I know you're really worried about your friend right now, and I know you don't know us really well, but let me promise you this. Are we out of the zone of truth? Yeah, yeah, you're far away from it. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master and your best buddy in the whole wide world. Thank you all so much for listening to The Adventure Zone, episode 21. Uh, we're about halfway through the current story arc, and I'm if you can't tell, uh, based on where it's going, I'm very excited for where it's going. This week, The Adventure Zone is sponsored in part by NatureBox. NatureBox, you've heard of them, you know them, you love them. You ha Wait, you haven't heard of them? How have you not heard of NatureBox? They're only the best provider of tasty, great-tasting taste sensations uh, in the whole wide world. And if you don't know them and you haven't eaten them, then you're just missing out on one of life's truest, greatest pleasures. Here's what they do. They send you a box of delicious snacks that are full of flavor, but they don't have any junk in them. I'm talking snacks like mini Belgian waffles, strawberry lemonade fruit stars, and a sweet and salty nut medley. They're, they're heavenly. I got some, some probiotic gorp. I don't even know what was in that, but I ate it all, and I loved every, every second of it. There weren't that many seconds either because I ate it so fast. Right now, I want to give you the opportunity to enjoy your first box of NatureBox snacks for free. You can try them out on NatureBox. Just go to naturebox.com slash adventure. You can get a free trial box of snacks. They send it to your house in a discreet box, and you snack down. I have a Jumbotron message here from one listener to another. 
I hope they both listen or else what is the point of buying a message on the show? If you want to get a message on the show, all you have to do is go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron and uh, they'll tell you exactly how to get a message on the show. It's pretty easy. This message is for Caroline and it's from Joel Barclay who says, Happy birthday, Caroline. Congratulations on being a year older. Looking forward to the next one with you. Yours truly, Joel. And then there's a smiley face emoticon. And I've been doing these for a, a few years now on, on the other podcasts we do. And it's really hard to enunciate emoticons. So I'm going to try and smile in a way that makes a noise. And I hope it comes through. That's actually the sound I make every time I smile. It's grotesque. Happy birthday, Caroline. Got another message here for Ranger Columbo, and it's from Sith Bilbo, who says, Happy sixth anniversary. How did a common woodland Dracula like me ever end up with a Jedi like you? A mystery. To mark the occasion, I sent the brothers your three psychopomp prints as they and Papa McElroy are our psychopomps through the Valley of Dull Times, lighting the way with their goofs. I hope they like the prints as much as I like you. XOXO. This is the part where I pretend that I got the prints, although I didn't, because I don't have a P.O. box in Austin. But my brothers have P.O. boxes in Los Angeles and Huntington, which I'm sure you can find the addresses of on our other podcast. And, um, yeah, I'm sure they're really great prints, but I don't get anything. People send them cookies. I don't get any of those cookies. 100% of those cookies get eaten by the time I get to them. Anyway, happy anniversary, Ranger and Sith. I'm sure those are your first names. I'm just sure of it. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about and sharing the show on Twitter and the like. Uh, We really appreciate it. We appreciate your iTunes reviews. Oh, if you tweet about the show using the the ZoneCast hashtag, you might end up as a character on the show, like Captain Captain Bane, who's named for Vinton Bane, who's Flesh Eater on Twitter. You could end up like Lieutenant Hurley, who's named after Jill Hurley, Genealogy Jill on Twitter. Uh, Or you could end up like Sloan, who's named after Kate Sloan, who's Sparkle Sloan on Twitter. Uh, Those are just a few characters that ended up in this arc. Uh, There's probably a couple more that we're going to name for this arc. So get those tweets in. And uh, thank you so much for telling everybody that you know about the show. We've seen a lot of people tell their friends who are into D&D. Seen a bunch of people say to their friends who aren't into D&D but might like the show anyway. Seen a lot of people start playing D&D because of the show, which is really flattering. Um, so thank you all so much for sharing the show. Oh, one last thing. We are doing our first live show ever next month at the LA Pod Fest. If you're in town, I'm, I think there's still passes available uh, for the LA Pod Fest. It runs from September 18th to September 20th. There's tons of great shows that are going to be there um, that you can find the, the full lineup at LAPodFest.com. Uh, we're going to be there. My brother, my brother, and me is also doing a show there. But then, like, WTF with Mark Marin is going to be there. Giant Bombcast is going to be there. There's a ton of great shows that are going to be there. Uh, if you can make it to LA, cool. If you can't, it's very exciting. We'll be streaming every podcast from the festival live, uh, and you can get your ticket to watch that stream uh, at LAPodFest.com and then just use the coupon code ADVENTURE. Uh, by doing that, you're going to be able to watch all of the podcasts live. I think they archive them for like a month. So if you miss them, you can still watch them afterwards, uh, which which is really cool. I think tickets are like 25 bucks, but you can save 5 bucks off that just by using the coupon code ADVENTURE. Uh, and by doing that, you actually help us out too because we get a, a cut of the ticket sales uh, when you use that coupon code. So yeah, uh, we're nervous slash excited for that. Uh, so if you want to watch that show live again, it's LAPodFest.com and use the coupon code ADVENTURE. Okay, that's it. I'm going to let you all get back to the episode now. Uh, the next episode will be up on August 27th. So I will talk to you then. Bye. Griffin, do we, I, I guess, I'll roll per, for perception. I want to see she's ta- she seems very confident in her abilities. Yeah. I want to see if that's like is that insight or perception to see if that's like justified or if we're dealing with kind of a little rascals-esque situation here. A little rascals-esque situation where like Buck Buckwheat makes Alfalfa like go steal something for him. No, then- we're like they think like we've got this. They're going to win the big race, but really like she's not very good. I mean, she seems really confident in herself. 
Um, okay. You don't need an insight check for that. And this wagon is looks pretty badass. Um, she, she tells you, uh, uh, the part that I need is a really integral component. Um, you're, you're allowed to come up with any propulsion system you want for your battle wagon. Um, and, and mine, it requires, uh, what's called an arcane core and it, it powers the, the wagon's engines and, and some of its other special features. We'll get to those later, but they're a really rare commodity. And, um, fortunately, there's a rival group of racers called the Hammerheads. And uh, I, I've been following their activities for a while, and they just got in a shipment. So if you can break into their garage and, and get me one of these arcane cores, I can win you that sure. race. And I, I can bring the, the Raven's Reign of Terror to an end. Um, How many of them are there? Now, you, don't care if, you don't care if these guys get killed, right? I do. I, I do. You can't. Oh, you geez. can't. Listen, I, I wish I could give you lethal authority but i i am still am sworn to uphold well the important laws i know i know i i <laughs> sort of am in a gray area a little bit but i need you to get in there don't kill anyone uh get me one of those arcane cores and then bring it back here I, it might be a little bit tricky not to kill anyone because they're a pretty they're known for being a pretty savage group of racers out on the track um they don't take as as light a touch as the 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 raven and i used to um but uh, yeah, I need you to get in there, get me one of those arcane cores, and, and get right back here. Is this, like, a big well, gang? Listen. Is this, like, 20 people, or is this, like, we're dealing with two or three? I would say their 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 total numbers are about 10. Cool. Well, then, flashback to what Taco said just a few minutes ago. It will be fine. Everything's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, we'll be able to handle this. No problem. No problem. You don't have any, no like, problem. knockout gas or... No, guns. no, I left it. Uh, no. Nuclear weapons. <laughs> I do have one of those, actually. I got a fat. I got a, yeah. so maybe some poison that'll knock them unconscious, and then, like, in two days, they'll get up. No, I'll, I, I mean, that's up. I was hoping that you guys would have, like, the stuff you needed to do adventure the way that you like to do it. Do you have poison that'll knock them up for two days, and then they get back up, and it looks exactly like delicious hamburgers? <laughs> <laughs> because I think if we had that, we would have a really good shot. Here. Or maybe in a donut? <laughs> A donut would be Maybe good. Like a some... giant. Okay, listen. What what does everybody really want to eat more than anything? Well, I'll answer that. And it's the giant little Debbie oatmeal pie from Honey I Shrunk the Kids. Yes. If we could get a, one of those and poison Honey I Shrunk the Kids. Dad was a film starring Rick Moranis, where he shrunk. Later, you might be Rick familiar. Moranis. It was also, He's, to be fair, it was also Peter a Scalari. TV show. Yeah. Starring Peter Scolari, yeah. Hmm. Uh, but if we had to die one of those who's poisoned, then like that would be that would work too. Like a poison knockout poison, two day knockout poison. I think the way to go is is definitely like poisoned food of some sort. I don't really uh, have anything like. Is that. Is there a catering company that we could hire? Are you guys just hungry? Kinda. I have formulated a plan. Oh boy! Here's what we need from you, Hurley. Hit me. We need something that they might be interested in buying. And we can present ourselves as peddlers that are trying to sell oh, to oh, them like some this. component they might need to get us in. Yeah, yeah rogue, rogue traders, right? <laughs> yeah, something something to get us in the door. And then we can acquire the the part you need much easier while two of us distract them. I mean, I have a few oh, parts left cool. over from these uh, from these cars that I've stripped for parts. Um, I, I guess you could give that a shot. Um, I got a, I got this harpoon gun. I got a, a, a cannon. I guess you could all kind of load those up in one of these wagons and then just push push it right over there. I mean, the the most Is it valuable. Next door? The most no, it's um, it's a few blocks away. Ugh. The most valuable thing I've got is this battle wagon, but there's no way I'm going to risk that. That makes sense. Let's challenge him to a race. What if we raced him? I don't have like, anything. Race him for pinks. I don't have anything to race him with right now. This one's not running. You got the battle wag. Oh, uh, this one doesn't work. Right? Yeah. You you, can, you mean like a you... foot race? <laughs> <laughs> Disassemble this battle wagon and then make a shittier one <laughs> that doesn't need this part. Clearly, we're, part we're not uh, pushed on time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, they're we can montage it. They're pretty formidable racers themselves. I doubt that it, they're going to be pushovers. I did think my plan did you, was pretty good. Which one was yours? Was yours you, the foot race? 
No, poisoning. mine was, was the one the where we pretend to be traitors. Oh, yeah. Undercover part salesman. Okay. Yeah. You you don't think there's anything they'd want to trade for? I mean, you could give it a shot. I don't I don't know their their business practices. They like their weapons, so if if they were going to trade for anything, it might well, be that. But these arcane cores are really really valuable. I doubt they'd want to just do a, a fair trade with you. They're also known for. They're, they're also. We're pretty, not talking about a fair trade. Listen, yeah, these a are really pretty unfair trade. These are a pretty violent bunch. There's no guarantee that they won't just jump you and take those parts for themselves. <laughs> uh, hey, I have, I have an idea. Yep, Merle. Do you think? Do you think they may need religion? <gasps> I'm just Why? gonna go ahead. And, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in right here. Cut you off with the pass. <laughs> I very, I very much doubt it. Well, very you don't know what's this. in their hearts. That is true. Let Merle take a second to share the good word. Let me just tell you about Pan. I'm good. <laughs> I have oh. another. I have another idea. Are we role playing within role playing? This is gonna be great. <laughs> Why not the three of you each try your own thing, and it'll be like a little wait a, a minute. contest. This is this is perfect. Yes, that is what we will do. <laughs> the, we have three. We have three different approaches, and we are each going to try our three different approaches on the hammerheads. Excellent. Okay. Yes, mine involves right. me getting beat up. Okay, exterior night. What? What are the three? What are the three? Well, you know what? Just I don't want to hear what the approaches are. We'll just you tell me who wants to go first. And I, then we'll I would go like first. to go first. Okay, so <laughs> exterior go first. I'm more excited Ex- about Merle's. Okay, exterior night. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> the three of you, are uh, congregated uh, around the corner from the entrance to the hideout of the Hammerheads, a savage racing crew whose headquarters you are attempting to infiltrate. Um, and uh, keep in mind that you are have been forbidden by Hurley to uh, kill anybody. Uh, well, the, she can forbid all she wants. <laughs> the, uh, the Hammerhead headquarters is uh, uh, surrounded by a 12-foot uh, scrap metal reinforced wall with... Uh, uh, twin spirals of barbed wire at the top of it. Um, there is a large, imposing gate uh, in the middle of the wall on the street that you are peeking out onto, uh, and there are two ruffians holding two human ruffians uh, holding large clubs, uh, t- chatting with each other idly uh, by this gate. And then uh, adjacent to the gate, poking right out of the uh, tall metal wall, is a uh, booth with a uh, glass window uh, looking out onto the street. And inside you see a third ruffian. Okay. All right. I walk up to the two ruffians. Hello, friends. Hey, uh, hold it right there, buddy. Hey, hold it right there, buddy. Don't come any closer. We're doing we're doing important business. Yeah, we're doing important business. <laughs> Second one says, "You Bowery boys." The first you know, guy who talked is imp- the lowest voice character Griffin's going to do <laughs> out of all these ruffians. Yes, <laughs> those are pretty impressive clubs. But let me tell you about my impressive club, the Club of Pan. What is the club that? Club of is Pan. It's like some sort of bread. No, no, it's like. It's like a wonderful, beautiful place where you will spend eternity. Do you know where you're going to go after you die? Uh, I'll never die. I'm too, I'm too strong. Yeah, he's real strong. <laughs> My mommy told me I'll never die. He's real strong. Hey, uh, hey, third guy in the booth uh, says, uh, hey, uh, hey, bud, why don't you scram? We, uh, we're, we're doing business here, okay? We don't want to hurt you. You seem like a nice enough little, little bloke. Why don't you get out of here? Well, and, uh, we'll, that's we'll... very nice of you. I'm here on business, too. The business of saving your souls. They're pretty safe already. I'm pretty I'm pretty cool with uh, how my soul is. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Uh, so uh, why don't you skip? You really you... think so? Griffin, it's you really... traditional. Let me tell I'm... you something. You don't know. You don't know what's coming down the road. Someone could try to poison you. Someone could try to rob you. Someone could try to kill you. Someone could run a train right into this building. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible? And then, where are you going to be? Under the train is the answer. Griffin, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but most of the time, DMs let people roll instead of just trying to bullshit their way through scenes. <laughs> no, I don't want to do anything to get in the way of this. Um, so, wait, are you, 
Are you going to run it? Is someone going to run a train through here? What's is someone going to try and there, poison us? There is a chance of all of those happening. It's a wicked world. Do you not How agree? It's a wicked Wait, world. Are you an insurance salesman or, <laughs> or a religious figure? <laughs> listen, listen. Yes, listen. I, I am. I'm. I, I've heard. I've heard a pitch like this before, right? But it's like most of the time, it's like it's, it cut cut your wicked ways. Not like God's going to kill you with a train. Because where's oh, a train? Listen, let me come tell you from? something. Let me tell you something. Out there in the world, there are all kinds of of bad, bad people, miscreants. Just when you think you're the evilest, most powerful, wickedest person out there, there's people right outside your door, right out there in the dark, who are going to come in and take everything you have. And then where will you be? Dead. That's where you'll be. Are you catching my drift yet, boyo? I think your drift is that you're gonna try and kill us with a train or something. I'm, I gotta, t- I gotta, I'm kind of starting to pick up what you're putting down, and I'm not sure I like the smell of your jib. Let me, let me point you. Look, look at the I elbow taco. Did he not wash his jib before he went up there? Allow me to show. Now, if you look, you will see right down there. And just then, I used thaumaturgy. A uh, thaumaturgy to make a train to make a loud sound. Of a train at the other end of the street. <laughs> Holy shit, this guy's not kidding. He's got some sort of train powers. <laughs> now, I would like to help you guys avoid that train. Uh, what do How we do have you to do? Yeah, possible? tell us. What do we have to do? We'll do anything. You got to run like crazy shit. Well, uh, you don't want to convert us to your, your, your bread religion? Yeah, I'll, you go ahead and run. I'll catch up to you, and I'll give you one of these extreme teen Bibles that I'm holding in my hand right in just a few minutes wow that's a cool looking bible unfortunately i'm I'm, i like my current religion i'm affiliated with i'm a lutheran so i'm gonna (laughs) stick with that whoa did you hear that oh it's getting louder guys you can stay here if you want i'm getting the hell out of here and the uh the littlest one uh standing outside by the gate uh scampers off and uh his his bigger uh uh counterpart that was standing there yells uh hey jerry get back jerry come jerry uh jerry's really afraid of trains you've really spooked him why don't you get out of here bud you're starting to pester us all right jerry jerry just ran away yeah my oh he, he, my he left his Jer- wallet my name's not jerry it's jerry <laughs> jerry is that yeah. with two e's at the end six it's italicized. Jerry. You know, Jerry, people. People who need people are the luckiest people in the world. He uh, grabs his what club with he grabs his club with two hands and starts to walk towards you. Bud, I'm not kidding. You gotta get out of here. I smell something funny and I think it's your jib. Get out. <laughs> I run. Okay. <laughs> I run so far away. All right, he he chases. You I gotta down the return street. Jerry's wallet. He Jerry, chases, <laughs> he chases you down the street a little bit and then stops and returns to his post. <laughs> okay, Magnus waits an appropriate amount of time till everything's calmed down. I walk out to the gate. Okay. Hello, I would like to join your gang, please. Okay, you gotta pay the dues. You gotta pay your gang dues. And that's how much? It. How much would that be? What? What's the? What's the going rate for a gang? Is it a monthly thing? Do I need to like pay up front? Oh, it, there's no subscription service. It's just a one-time fee of ten thousand, ten thousand up front, and then you get you get in. Ten thousand what now? Goldens. I've got this fish. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> oh, let me see him. Let me well, see, can you I hold see him? with your eyes? You see him with your eyes. Oh no, let me hold him. Listen, I'll, I'll listen. I'll give you access to this gang. You just got to give me that fish forever. Says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. But why would you even teach? Why would you I can tell like you that? where to get other fish like this? Oh, I've got a guy. <laughs> I got a fish guy. He can set up your whole gang with fish if you let me in the gang. I will hook you up with my guy on LinkedIn and sorry, chain LinkedIn and you can <laughs> you can you can get in there and get all the fish you want. It's a nice offer. Um the problem is I I see your fish and mm-hmm. I like him. I, yeah. I I think I love him a little bit. Oh, well, I get that. I get that. He has that effect on people. Steven is very charming. I tell you, um, what, hey, why just don't... to clarify, just so I'm, I'm clear on this, we, we're wa- the other here are watching, right? Like, yeah, we yeah. Can see, we're okay. Good. I just want to make sure. Um, he says, "I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. You can join the gang, and then I'll get the fish Monday, Wednesday, and Friday." What and is today? Mm. Today's a, today's a Thursday. <laughs> okay, I like this so far. How do you not know what day it is? 
You know, I've been very busy. I get that. Sometimes time just sort of slips away from you. Ah, tell me about it. You don't have that nine to five? You know what I mean? And pretty soon it's like, whoa, what, what, even, what even day is it without the weekly board meetings? The uh, guy in the booth yells out, hey, Jerry, I don't think the boss would like you uh, letting members into the game without consulting with him first. I'm happy to meet with this boss. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Why don't you, J- Jerry, this is Jerry talking. Says, uh, I'll tell you what. Why don't you let me go inside and I'll check with the boss. You, you stay here. I'll go inside and check with the boss. And then uh, we can uh, we can move on from there. Says, Sounds great. Okay. He uh, he goes in. He uh, the, the guy in the booth flips the switch and a small opening in the gate opens up and the guy goes in and then the guy in the booth flips the switch again. And the uh, the door shuts, and now it's just you and the guy in the booth. I look at the guy in the booth, and I say, "Oh wait, did he say Thursday?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Thursday. It's thir- Are you oh, drunk? It's Thursday. Sorry, I will be right back. If he comes back before I get back, tell him I like ten minutes tops. I'll be right back. Okay, and, the boss is I, gonna be pretty miffed if you if he comes out. Uh, you ten, know, literally like ten minutes. All right, ten ten minutes. I run back to Taco and Merle. <laughs> okay, I took out another one. Wait. One left, Taco. Taco, there's one Taco, left. You got this. Go do your magic. Okay. I, uh, out of sight of the guards, cast dis- disguise self on me to look exactly like Jerry. Oh, brilliant. You guys say that in the mic, Dad. I want that recorded for posterity. <laughs> oh, brilliant. There we go. What, is, a, what okay. is this spell? What is disguise what? self? What, what is this spell? I've never heard of it. Uh, disguise self lets me alter my appearance uh, to, to look like whatever uh, for an hour. Um, I can only... Uh, uh, there, there are some limitations on it. Uh, what is Jerry, by the way? What is his... Uh, human. He's human. a, he's a, a human. Hum- human. Human. Now okay. we're talking Jerry, not Jerry. I can, yeah, I can make little myself Jerry, little Jerry afraid of trains. Yeah. yeah, little Jerry afraid of trains, including my clothing, armor, and weapons, <laughs> and other belongings on my person, look different until the spell ends. Until uh, I dismiss it, uh, I can uh, seem one foot shorter or taller, or can appear thin, fat, or in between. Okay. Um. I can, um. So I'm. 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 I saw Jerry. That's why I wanted to clarify that we were watching this. Ah. I, okay. I I change myself to look exactly like Jerry. Okay. And to help sell it, I come walking back with my hand on Jerry, patting him on the shoulder. Well, I found him. I talked him into coming back. Hey, Here's this, your wallet, Jerry. He's a real smart guy, see? Uh, but listen, guys, now I got to take a poop. <laughs> what? You know, like a poop, like a real emergent poop. That's why I brought you back, old buddy. Hey, listen, man, so I really he, appreciate it. You guys should listen to this guy. He's a smart fella. I got to take a poop. Oh, I get, I, I get that. Why can't you? You know we don't have a bathroom in the garage. That would be disgusting. <laughs> Let me into the garage? Well, of course you. Well, okay. That doesn't make sense. They're doing a lot of work in there. They would need some sort of po- <laughs> place to poop. I don't know what to tell you, bud. We don't got a bathroom. I don't know what to tell you, bud. <laughs> you should know this. You, only. you work here. You know we don't got a bathroom. I, you know I, how when you have to really, 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 really poop, you don't really think straight. Listen, I, I gotta really it. poop, but I, I left my teepee in the garage. Do you need listen? Listen to me, little Jerry. You've always been my favorite. <laughs> do you need me to take you? And don't be afraid, and don't be embarrassed, because we've all been there. But do you need me to take you to the to the to the to the John? Is he inside the garage? It's not inside the garage. I can. He uh, he opens up the door to the booth and walks outside, and he's like, "Give me a hand." I'll walk you to the John, and we'll, we'll just go, and we'll take care of your business, and we'll be back before the boss knows that we're gone. You can poop. So- and- sounds great. Okay. <laughs> Come with me, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Come watch me poop. Merle, clobber him. I got to roll to see if I have to poop, because I need to make this look real. <laughs> Constipation check. Uh, this would actually be a bluff check. Thank you for reminding me, Justin. Okay. <sighs> Shit. Yeah, exactly. Which part? The part that I'm Jerry or the part that I have to use the bathroom very bad? Just this whole situation. I think you're bluffing like six different ways. He's going to roll an insight check to contest. Uh, he yes. rolled a 14. Well, I've got a... What's the adjusting stat on bluff? Yeah, there's no bluff, Griffin. Oh, there's not? No, not in 5th not in edition. There's not a lie? Lying? Uh, there's performance? Uh, deception. deception. Deception, yeah, deception. that's what it is. I got a 16. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Come Ooh. with me, little Jerry. Give me a hand. Don't get lost. And he starts to uh, walk off with you down down the street. <laughs> Towards the shitter. Towards the shitter. Where is it? <laughs> I walk back up. Okay. I just kind of stand with Merle and go, I, do, should we wait? He left the door open. I mean, I know, but like, should we help Taco? Is he going to go in the bathroom with that strange man? And then you guys hear, you hear from your stone that you have with you, your far speed uh-huh. stone. Well, I think this is going to be fine. I'm not worried at all. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that um, it's going to be a fine poop, and I think I can totally handle this whole poop by myself. It's not a big deal. No, Jerry, listen. Well, little I don't Jerry. want anybody to worry about listen, me. Listen, little Merle Jerry. Merle sounds like he's fine. Little Jerry, you, you can't tell me not to worry about you. You know, I love you <laughs> no. too much. Come on. He's got shy bowels. No, no listen. Merle, he's gone. Uh, through the I'm sp- gone. You're through the stone of far speech, this is good. Through the stone of far speech, uh, Taco or uh, Merlin Magnus, you hear. Uh, Wait a minute, who's that coming down the street? Wait a minute, that looks like that looks like you, little jerk. What the hell is going on? Oh shit. <laughs> Hey, real quick, before we let you go, I just wanted to say thanks one more time to NatureBox, where you can order hundreds of great-tasting, healthy snacks. You can go to naturebox.com slash adventure to sign up for a free sampler box of great-tasting, healthy snacks. Thank you all for listening. We will have another episode waiting for you, hot and fresh out the kitchen, on August 27th. Talk to you then. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Oh, hey there, everybody. I'm Guy Branham, and welcome to Pop Rocket, a new weekly show picking over the pop culture we all love to love. With me to talk TV, film, music, and anything else entertaining are journalist Margaret Wappler, academic, writer, and DJ Oliver Wang, digital strategist Winter Mitchell, and comedian Santina Muha. It's an intellectual and incredibly snark-filled discussion about pop culture by five cranky Hollywood 30-somethings. No name-calling, no rudeness, just straight talk and a lot of role-play. I'm only 30-something for another year. Me too. And I don't <laughs> tell anybody I'm 30-something. Pop Rocket comes out every week from MaximumFun.org.